One of my favorite tools in Adobe Illustrator is the Pathfinder. To see it, go up to the window menu and choose Pathfinder. The basic explanation for the Pathfinder is that it allows you to make more complex shapes out of basic shapes. Now you can do more than that, but that's the basic explanation we're going to start with so that you can start playing with it. So in order to demonstrate this, I'm going to grab the ellipse tool and I'm going to draw two circles. And to do that, I'm just going to grab the selection tool and on my first circle, hold alt or option and click and drag to create a second one. Now what I'm looking for is I'm going to make this into a moon, so a crescent, which would be hard to do with a pen tool very quickly unless you're really, really good at the pen tool. But as you can see, I can move it around so I can create a moon in this shape or up here and kind of create this one that's more like a hammock. So whatever I want to do with that, then I can highlight both of these and then I can come over here and choose one of these shape modes. Now Unite is going to merge them together into one shape. I'll click Command Z. Now minus front will take away the front object. So that's where I get my crescent. I'll do Command Z again. If I choose Intersect, it's going to keep the middle part. So this is a great way to do eyes and leaves, etc. And then last but not least, we can do exclude and it'll exclude that inner piece. But again, this becomes one object. So I'm going to go back and choose minus front. And there we go. Now we have one crescent shape. Now pathfinders down here are a little bit different. It sort of cuts the shapes, but it doesn't really get rid of um, the shapes or yes, we'll just leave it at that. So we'll go ahead and do, let's say we want to make Swiss cheese. So I'm going to do a rounded rectangle and Swiss cheese obviously is not this color, but just for purposes of, you know, it's pretty close to white and so it'd be hard to see. So for right now, just pretend this is Swiss, Swiss cheese. So on top of this cheese, I'm going to add some circles so I can drag that out, drag this out, drag a bigger chunk out. Okay. So it would have been a lot easier if I had changed the color of this, but just go with me. Okay. So if we highlight all of these and we're going to exclude that background shape and we're going to make these green just so you can see them. So we can highlight all of these now and choose divide and divide is my favorite one. <clears throat> Sorry, because it uses all of these shape lines to just cut into that shape. So now with this divided, it's all still grouped together. So we can right click and choose ungroup. And now we can click on each of these and get rid of those actual circles to make true Swiss cheese where it has all those gaps in it. So, and it looks like I need to take that part. All right, so that's the basics of using shape and pathfinder um, modes. So let's see how we can use it. So this particular object right here is the Wells Far Fargo building in downtown Denver, and it's made out of a rectangle and two half circles. So in order to create this, we're going to go ahead and create a basic rect rectangle. And then we're going to create a couple of ellipse half circles by making one circle holding shift. And then we're going to grab a line segment and right down the middle and you can tell because you'll see these pink smart guides. If you can't see your smart guides, go up to view and choose smart guides or command or control U. All right. So that's right down the middle and you don't even need a stroke color. You just need to highlight both objects and now hit divide in order to split those in half. They are always going to start out grouped in divide. So we're going to right click and choose ungroup so that we can split one half away from another. So then we want to take this half circle and we want it to intersect right down the middle of that circle and make sure it lines up so we don't get any wonky bumps as you see here. So I'll do command Z and then this one, same thing, but this one we want to be a little bit bigger. So it has a little bit of a lip. So we're going to do this and that might be too darn big. So we could, do the same thing here and then always make sure it intersects. Yeah, that was too much. So uh, we can do a little bit more with this one. Okay. So again, making sure that intersects right on the spot. So I would mess with this a little bit more because I think it needs a higher lip, but for now, here we go. So these are all three different shapes. So what we're going to do is highlight all of them and choose unite to make one shape. 
which is a really powerful option. Okay, so just so you know, there's this new shape builder tool in Illustrator. I think it was introduced um, like one or two versions ago. So make sure you play with that because it, it's really flexible and it gives you a lot more, um, um, how, do you, how do you say? Like right now with the crescent, when I cut that out, it's gone. And so this is my crescent. What if I wanted it to be, you know, more straight up and down crescent? Well, if I use that shape builder tool, um, then I should be able to, to move that piece later on. So, okay, so let's see how we can make this. And we're just gonna use a pen tool for this. If you haven't used a pen tool before, we're gonna use something really basic. So I'm gonna do a light orange and I should probably move these out of the way, but still so we can see them. So let's make them a little bit smaller them at the top there we go so again we're gonna switch the pen tool and we're gonna say no fill color oops that's changing all of that so let's undo click off click the pen and now we just want to have a stroke color so we're gonna click once and then click up here to make a angled line and then we're gonna come down here and those smart guides will tell you when your lines are match matching now it doesn't necessarily tell you when it's equidistant, so that's kind of a bummer. So you're gonna have to eyeball this. And if it doesn't look quite right, then you can change it later. So I'm gonna hold Alt or Option and click so that it stops making that shape. Go back to the selection tool. Now if, if for some reason yours is off, you can grab the direct selection tool, click on that top anchor point, and then move that anchor point around. So I'll do Command Z because mine was pretty good and go back to the selection tool and clicking on that line will now brings up the stroke options. And so we can make our stroke really thick and weighty. Now shape or pathfinder doesn't really work um, as well with strokes. So we are going to go up to the object menu and choose expand to turn this into just a shape. So it has a path, path along the outside instead of now just one path on the inside for a stroke. So we do want to make a flat shape. In order to do that, we can use our minus front. So we can just put a rectangle and make sure it covers both points at the bottom, highlight all, and then do minus front. Okay, so I might have made a bigger peak, so that, that's a mistake on my part, but this is gonna allow us to do overlapping. So we need a copy of this. So we're gonna come over here to the rotate, reflect, scale, shear, reshape tool. And what we're gonna do is we are gonna choose the rotate tool. And the rotate tool, when we double click on it, will allow us to rotate it 180 degrees and we wanna copy it. So there we're gonna create two exact um, same shapes and I'm gonna change this to whatever color I want. And what we wanna do is we wanna delete one of these middle pieces so that it looks like this blue one is behind the orange at this point. So we're gonna highlight all of this and choose divide. And now we're gonna actually not, well, let's ungroup it first. We're actually not going to make this, we're not actually not gonna delete this. We're just gonna make it the exact same orange color that we were using. So that way it looks like it's part of this one. So now I can grab all of those orange pieces and go ahead and do unite. So they become one piece. And then all of these blue pieces, don't forget this one, and hit unite. So now we have one piece and two piece. So, hey, that could make a good logo too, but there you go. That's how you can create some overlap objects. Okay, so let's do something a little bit more complicated, made out of rectangles, a circle, and a star, and then we use a rectangle to cut off the edges. So let's move this one down here and I'll make it a little bit lighter so we can still see it. And we're gonna grab the rectangle tool and I'm going to make mine a different color so it looks better on white. And I'm just gonna start out with these kind of thin rectangles and grab the selection tool. And what we're gonna do again, alter option to drag it down and it's going to hold shift so that we can't go left or right. And we want a nice little gap in between there. And now before you do anything else, hit command or control D and that's gonna repeat the last step. So the last step was when we copied that shape and moved it down. And if we do Command D, it'll do it again for you very easily. So if I had hit Command D a bunch of times, we're gonna keep getting a bunch of rectangles. 
but this also makes sure that it's perfectly equidistant from each other. So that's pretty good. So we can group these if we wanted to, but um, yeah, for right now, we're just going to leave it. Actually, nope, let's just go ahead and group it. So right clicking group or command or control G. And now we can grab our ellipse tool and we're going to make that circle. We don't want it too big or too small. And it's hard for us to see when it actually is in the center. So what we're going to do is highlight both objects and we're going to hit the alignment options up here, horizontal center and vertical center. And there we go. So that makes sure that both of them are, they're sitting perfectly. So now we can highlight all of these and do unite. So this actually makes it one whole shape. So that's why you got to align it first. Then we're going to use the star tool to create one in the middle. Again, hold shift because that's going to allow it to sit perfectly up and down. And I can change the color just so you can see that. And now when I highlight all of them, I can do minus front. This won't work if you haven't united the, the background shapes first because it doesn't know where to minus this star from. Should it minus it from the circle or this rectangle or this rectangle? So by making them one shape, it knows that it needs to minus it from that one shape. Okay, so last but not least is we want to create this angle and we want it to make it perfect. So you can use a line or you can use a rectangle. So I'm going to do a little bit, I'm going to use a rectangle because it's a little bit easier to see in this tutorial. So I'm going to create one rectangle and I'm going to make it just a color that I don't want and I'm going to angle it a little bit. And I think I'm going to do a sharper angle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it in and I just want the edge of this rectangle to touch the edge of the, or this point. And there's a reason why, because I want to make sure it looks perfect and see how it's trying to line up with this object down here. So we don't want that to happen. So I want it to line up perfectly with that point. Okay. So with this perfectly lined up and I might've done too big of a angle. So with this perfectly lined up and I can do the left arrow key on here if I wanted to, but before you do anything else, we're going to reflect. So let's go over here and choose reflect and double click that and copy it. So that way now when I hold shift, I can move that rectangle over, come on, move it and then hold shift. There you go. And get that to touch right at the same point. So you're going to get the exact same angle. So we can highlight these two objects first and do minus front and then these two and do minus front. Okay. So now because this is one whole shape, it's pretty cool. Now we can use these different um, gradients because it, it'll, and we could have done that in other ways. Um, but for right now, this is the easiest way just to create one object. And then the gradient works on all the, that object instead of the different parts of it. So last but not least, let's look at how to create, um, this kind of shattered or shard text that we have over here. So this is an example um, that I, a previous student created. So I'm just gonna do this very quickly because we're running out of time. So I'm gonna grab a chunky text. So impact is the chunkiest text. So I'll type my name and I'll just do all capitals and highlight this and turn it to impact. But you should be able to find some really good chunky fonts or I can do like cowboys, which doesn't make sense for me because I'm not one, but there you go. So once you have that, you need to go up to object or type and choose create outlines and these will turn these into shapes. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take all these different lines, just line segments. And if you want to turn the stroke on so you can actually see where, where this is happening, then you should definitely do that. So with all of those selected, I'm going to highlight all of them to select all of them. I can go up to divide now and it's going to create those all into pieces. Then I can go to object, live paint, wherever it's at, live paint, make, live paint, make, and then come over here. And I always forget where this tool is. It's right here under the shape builder, choose live paint bucket. And I can come in and just start paint bucketing all these different shapes. So I can grab another color and add that there. So it's just a fun way to make a cool shard text. So I definitely think that you should play with some of that. But that's the basics of how to use the Pathfinder in Adobe Illustrator.